Um, when domestic terrorists stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, to not just protest or to take back the people's house, but rather to overthrow our elected government, they were incited by wild conspiracy theories championed time and again by the former president and several of, her fo of his followers. Uh, the origins of these groups uh, is well known, and I wasn't surprised at all, sadly, that some were police officers and some were in the military, uh, involved in white supremacist organizations that have terrorized this country and terrorized African Americans for a couple of hundred years. Uh, Capitol Police officers, as you know, were called the N-word, and I think you said that in your opening statement. And uh, what we have found over the years is that many times when there were white supremacists in the South and in other parts of our country that terrorized African Americans, sometimes they covered themselves in hoods, but oftentimes they were law enforcement. This is nothing new. And I very much want to see laws against domestic terrorism, but I will tell you that I'm concerned about if we pass laws against domestic terrorism, that those laws will be turned against the various, the very communities that have been terrorized. So the COINTELPRO has been, has been discussed, initiated by J. Edgar Hoover. Under this program, while the KKK was terrorizing people in the South, COINTELPRO and FBI targeted civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King, and it was commonly understood that the FBI abused its surveillance power in a manner to uh, suppress a peaceful movement. Uh, given this history, it's not a leap to recognize the need for scrutiny of FBI activities in Black and African American communities. Uh, just recently, if anybody is confused about this, watch a new movie that just came out called Judas and the Black Messiah that talks about the assassination of a leader of the Black Panther Party, regardless of what you think of the Panthers. I don't know that anyone deserves to be executed while they're asleep. Um, there is a police officer that on his deathbed just the other day had a deathbed confession that as a African-American member of the New York Police Department that he was involved and the NYPD was involved in the assassination of Malcolm X. So what my concern is, is that if we uh, in entertain legislation on domestic terrorism, how can we be sure that it will be targeted and not be used to groups that are not involved in terrorism? In August of 2017, the FBI intelligence assessment entitled Black Identity Extremists Likely Motivated to Target Law Enforcement Officers. And I asked over and over again, give me an example of a black extremist organization. Tell me about one. And I know uh, earlier in this hearing, an organization was mentioned that I uh, think is ludicrous to be considered a terrorist organization, and that's the black Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelites. But Madam Chair, I want to ask the committee for something. I would like to have a classified briefing so that the FBI can come in and tell us about black terrorists, black extremist organizations, because I am not aware of one. Now, if you want to talk about 30 years ago, we can talk about 30 years ago. I want to talk about 2021. Tell me about black terrorist organizations. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 27. For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days, and shalom to the hopeful elect. All you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is Truth Always Prevails. And this is a response to Elder Apostle Aram Lab's video earlier. The title is called The Word Is Out. And he went into how there's a live stream of the House of Representatives. They're having a hearing on the rise of so-called domestic terrorists. And they're trying to implicate the Israelites with all these 
government set up groups and all of these factions that are allegedly coming up against the government. And basically, they're slandering us. The scriptures describe Esau as the accuser of his brethren. And that's exactly what he's doing. And he's labeled us as, quote unquote, black identity extremists. He's labeled us as so-called black Hebrew Israelites, which there's no such thing as a black Hebrew Israelite. There's no such thing as a black person. We're the Israelites. We're the sons of Yasharala. Yah meaning he, Shar meaning prince, Allah meaning God or power. In the Hebrew, it's Yashar Allah. In the English, we're the sons of God. We're the princes of the Most High. So when you go into who we actually are, this is the truth. This is the 100% truth. People of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the Israelites. We're not black Hebrew Israelites. There's no such thing as a black Hebrew Israelite. And I was trying to come across the exact spot that the elder played in his clip but it's like a three hour live stream. I couldn't find the exact clip, but I did come across a point in the video where a representative by the name of Karen Bass, she's from California and she, she just went in, man. She was going in on how the FBI and the NYPD murdered Malcolm X and how they were involved in the COINTELPRO, how the so-called domestic terrorist bill is actually set up to kill the main people that are targets of domestic terrorism. You Edomites, you so-called white people, your government has been the most terroristic organization in human history. You've terrorized so-called Negroes, you've terrorized so-called Latinos, and you've established this country by terrorizing so-called Native Americans, the Israelites. You've slaughtered our people for centuries, and now you're trying to find a domestic terrorist. You are the domestic terrorist. Let me get this real quick. This is... I brought this out a couple of lessons back, but this this is poignant right now. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 17. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. Right. The self-proclaimed white man will set your house on fire and then show up three minutes later in a fireman uniform with a hose to save the day. He's the villain in the Lord's movie, but he desperately wants you Jakes to view him as the hero, as the savior. He has a God complex and he desperately wants God's chosen people to view him as the Messiah, to view him as the, the source of salvation when he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. And right now this devil is planning his assault. He wants to paint the men of the Lord as domestic terrorists so he could be justified in putting us to death. But we're ready, man. The scriptures already tell us that you're going to do these things, and the scriptures already tell us that the Lord is going to provide a way out. The scriptures already tell you exactly what you're going to do, and you're, you're so base, you're so helpless, you're so powerless that you have to do exactly what the Lord says you're going to do while you yourself are claiming to be the most high. You're claiming to be the most powerful, you know, the most highly evolved, high IQ, you're this, you're that. No, you're the basis of men. You're a troglodyte. You're a cave dweller that's been put in power for a very temporary season to punish the sons of the Most High because of our disobedience against the Heavenly Father. And ultimately, none of it's going to work. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of of the workers of iniquity. And who is the wicked? Job 9 and 24, Malachi 1 and 4. It clearly tells you that Esau is the wicked. The earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. And right now, the wicked can see that their reign is at an end. It tells you in Revelation 12 that this devil is going to come down with great wrath. Why? Because he knows that he has a short time. This man knows that he's at the end. You have the so-called black woman in the House of Representatives rebuking him to his face, telling him that he's a liar, telling him that he's the killer, that he's the thief, that he's the true terrorist. So what does that mean? If the Israelites are waking up to who we are and your kingdom is based on us not knowing who we are, then it's game over. Yahweh is on his way back to completely eradicate this kingdom from off the face of the earth. This is verse 3. Who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. And the word wet here in Psalm 64 and 3, it's W-H-E-T. It's not wet as in you dampen something. It's wet as in you sharpen. This man sharpens his tongue as a sword. And when you read Genesis, the 27th chapter, his blessing was the sword. He was given the sword to take peace from the earth and to take the fatness of the earth through violence and force. But part of that sword is what? His propaganda, his lies, his deception. He frames mischief by a law. He writes nonsense and madness into law and then justifies himself by saying, look, it's legal. I can do this. Look at the fine print. 
Look what we wrote down on a piece of paper. That makes it okay for us to steal your land. That makes it okay for us to treat you as three-fifths of a human being. That makes it okay for us to slaughter you. That makes it okay for us to ship you around the world and break up your families and destroy you because we wrote on a piece of paper that you're subhuman. We wrote on a piece of paper that you're less than a man. This is what this man does. He wets his tongue as a sword. He uses semantics and pseudoscience to paint himself as the most high and then he just does whatever he wants because he doesn't think that there's going to be any consequence for his behavior. But he left out the part that the most high has a chosen people. And it's you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We have a savior. We have a buckler and a defense. And none of this man's chicanery is going to work. All of his plans, plots, and schemes are going to fall upon his own head. This is verse four, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Right, this devil doesn't fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, so he shoots at the perfect. Who is the perfect? You Israelites. All right, the word perfect doesn't mean someone that doesn't make mistakes. It means someone who's complete, who's whole. The Israelites are whole. We're a complete people. When you go into the description of our forefather Jacob, was that he's a plain man dwelling in tents. That word plain means whole. It means perfect. So this devil is shooting at the perfect right now. Again, going back to the book of Revelation, he's the accuser of his brethren. He's accusing us of being domestic terrorists when he's the biggest terrorist that the earth has ever seen. No one is more terroristic than the so-called white man, the Edomite, the devil. This is verse five. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. They commune of laying snares privily, which a snare is a trap. It says, they say, who shall see him? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both their inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep, right? This man has a deep mind of searching out wickedness and iniquity. He doesn't have a deep mind for righteousness. It tells you in Sirach that the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. He's not a wise man, but he's very diligent and prudent when it comes to finding ways to destroy the earth, to destroy the family structure, to destroy the nature between man and woman, to destroy vegetables, to destroy crops, to destroy everything that the Most High set up. He's put on the earth to taint creation. Anything that's pure and righteous on the earth, the so-called white man wants to get his red palms on it and defile it. That's what he was created to do. That's why his mind is deep in wickedness. But this is verse seven. But the most high shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Right. That arrow starts with the truth, which is Yahawashai. He's the way, the truth and the light. But it, it ends with the brightness of his coming. All right. The prophets right now are exposing this devil. And then Yahawashai is going to come back and physically eradicate this man. His society is going to be destroyed through thermonuclear missiles. The chariots are going to deliver the elect. And then it's game over, man. New Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven. And that's when justice is going to be implemented on a mass scale. Righteousness is going to go forth out of Zion and truth is going to prevail. Everything in the kingdom of heaven is going to be based on the truth. We're not going to rule in wickedness. We're not going to rule in deception. We're not going to have underhanded schemes to undermine the nations. The nations are going to have their plots of land and they're going to be ruled in righteousness and they're going to pay tribute to the Israelites. And in exchange, they're going to have a righteous kingdom of perfection. Everything is going to work without a hitch. It's going to be perfect. And you Edomites are going to be completely destroyed. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 29. I'm going to start at 21 and then go up. It says that make a man an offender for a word that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. Now, who reproves in the gate? The men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the prophets. So this man makes an offender for a word. So if you bring out the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, very soon you're going to be labeled a domestic terrorist. Very soon your face is going to be on the news. Your family is going to come at you. Why? Because they worship the image of the beast. And ultimately they worship Esau. He's their God. He's their deity. He's their hope. He's their salvation. So whatever he says goes. Look, inject this syringe into your body. Take this. It's good for you. It's going to heal you. It's going to prevent this disease. It's going to prevent that disease. Oh, by the way, inject this chip into your right hand. It's going to make life so much easier for you. These people, Esau already has them. Satan already has them. But the men that are in the Lord's hand, Satan covets them. He wants them. Man. He, just like Yahweh told Apostle Peter, Satan desires to sift you. Satan wants you because he doesn't have you. He has everybody else. And this devil is making an offender for a word. If you preach the Bible, if you believe in the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh 
Shai from Genesis to Revelation, very soon, just believing in the word is going to be considered a terroristic act. You're going to be considered anti-government, anti-science, anti-this, anti-that. Meanwhile, all of these people are anti-Messiah. They're against Yahweh Shai. They're against the truth. But the truth is going to prevail. It always does and always will. I remember hearing a brother say one time that the truth is like one of those those buoys in the water, in the ocean. You try to sink it, no matter how much you try to push it down, eventually it's going to pop right back up. You can't suppress the truth forever because the truth is the truth. When you read First Edris, it tells you that truth is the principal thing. It's above all other things. Women, wine, the king. Truth is number one because everything else is wicked ultimately. Everything else is is tampered with. Everything else is tainted. A man has an opinion. A woman has an opinion. A man has an agenda. A woman has an agenda. The truth is the truth. The truth is objective. The truth is, okay, two plus two is four. That's math, which the word of moth in the Hebrew is truth. The truth is math. It's simple as that. It's higher than any man's opinion, any man's will. The truth ultimately is the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It's immutable. It can't be changed. Prophecy is the truth. Everything that the Lord said he's going to do, he's going to do. And he's doing it right now. You could see it. But this is back in Isaiah 29. I want to go up and show you what happens to these men that are making a man of the Lord an offender for a word. This is verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. And that's exactly what's happening right now. The men of the Lord are speaking the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The book has been opened in the firmament and the men are preaching day and night. This word is going out. Like the elder said, it says, The meek also shall increase their joy in Yahweh, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Right. When you go into the destruction of Babylon the Great in the book of Revelation, it tells you that Yahweh is going to kill them that maketh and loveth the lie. If you love this place, if you love lies, if lies are your refuge, you're going to be destroyed because truth is springing up. You can't do anything about the truth. It's like trying to smother a rose in concrete. That rose is going to find a way to climb out. And seek the light. And that's the elect. The 144,000 are those roses that are leaning towards the light. And the light is Yahawashai. He's the light of the world. So this plan, this plot, this scheme that this devil has to cast a bad light on us, it doesn't matter what these people think. The only opinion that matters is the opinion of Yahweh Bashem Yahawashai. And it tells you that in the 144,000, in our mouths was found no guile. So you could say what you want about us. You could write a bill and a law. You could say this. You could say that. But... There's no guile found in our mouth before the throne of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So let me end with this. This is back in 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 44. And temperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown. And truth is sprung up. Right, that's the time we're in. Truth is springing up. And truth always prevails, man. There's a Michael Jackson quote that says, truth always prevails. And I believe that. And I believe in God. That's what he said, man. He's an Israelite, which he was completely, I mean, Michael Jackson was bugged out of his mind, but can you blame him? He was used in this system as basically a sex toy from a little boy. These elites just passed him around and completely destroyed him, man. This is what happens to the sons of the Most High in this defiled and crepid and perverse system. You have the most talented among us that are taken and brought to Hollywood and just used and abused, man. It's absolutely perverse. And then you grow up as a weirdo, man. None of this is going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. Again, it's going to be a kingdom of truth and righteousness. The law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai are going to govern the earth. But it says, righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. And who is that talking about? The elect the remnant of Israel. We've gotten the victory. We've overcome through the blood of the lamb. We have the victory through Yahweh Shai. So nothing that you say in a hearing of the House of Representatives, nothing that you write in the law, nothing that you try to execute is going to stop the prophecies of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, because that's the truth. You have a House of Representatives, a bunch of old Edomite men, and now bugged out black women who are now speaking the truth. Our House of Representatives starts with Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the archangels, the rest of the angels, the 144,000, the men of the Lord, the prophets. That's who Israel has as our House of Representatives. And we're going to see who's going to win. The Most High, 
his only begotten son and his chosen people versus you devils and a bunch of paperwork. We're going to write this amendment and write that amendment. But what we're going to see how that amendment holds up to the chariots of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and the judgment of the Most High. We're going to see, man, real soon. So Abaratazadis was edifying to the elect. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash, double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect.